Obviously, this is a huge day for you. We're still waiting for the first trade. Just nine months ago, you told me it felt like you'd been hit by a torpedo when travel halted, that the company was on the verge of losing it all. What does it feel like in this moment to now be taking your company public at potentially a $47 billion valuation? Uh, I feel really lucky. You know, sometimes um, in life, you appreciate something when you can face losing it. And so if I didn't appreciate it before this year, having stared into what felt like a abyss for travel, and then to kind of rally together with thousands of people and rebuild the company from the ground up, something that I think is stronger than it ever was before the pandemic. And I, I feel incredibly fortunate and I feel like thankful, not just for all of our employees, but for our community, you know, our guests and our host who built this company with us. So this is a very humbling period for me. So on that note, you say this company may be stronger now than ever. Why go public now when we're still in the middle of this pandemic nightmare? Why not wait till there's a vaccine or more clarity on the future? Well, we were, I mean, as you know, we were prepared to go public this year. And then when the pandemic broke out, we put the S1 on hold. And I could never have imagined us going public this year when it was April or May. And then something pretty remarkable happened people this summer, after having been kind of locked in their homes, sheltering in place, wanted to get outside, but they didn't want to travel far. So they started getting in their cars and they started staying in Airbnb. And at that moment, it became really clear that this business model is incredibly resilient, and that our hosts can adapt to really any changing travel behaviors. And it was that point that we thought, you know, we actually have a shot this year. This is our opportunity to bring shareholders into this company as this new, you know, the new travel season will be upon us and people who understand just how resilient and unique this company is, we're really excited. And I'm excited that we can, like, for example, bring hosts in, tens of thousands of hosts in as shareholders as well. Now, we just got indication on your opening price. Uh, shares indicated to open right now at $139 a share, which is more than double what you priced at. I mean, are you at all concerned about froth? What do you think about that number and the potential uh, that you're leaving billions of dollars on the table. That's the first time I've heard that number. Um, that is, that's a, I, you know, when we, in April, we raised money um, and it was a debt financing. It, 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 that price would have priced us around 30 bucks. So I, I don't know what else to say. It, it's that, that's a, that's a, that's a very, that, that's, um, that is, yeah, I'm very humbled by it. And, um, you know, we know that we're on a very long journey and um, we're, we're going to be very, very focused. And it's obviously, today is a very special day for everyone. But, uh, you know, the, the, the higher the stock price, the higher expectations, the harder we're going to be working, obviously. I understand, Brian. It is, it's hard to find the right words. Um, there are still lockdowns and reopenings and lockdowns happening around the world. How is the fourth quarter shaping up for you? What are you preparing for the next few weeks as the COVID outbreak surges? Well, the most important thing is health and safety, obviously. You know, we've had to make difficult decisions. For example, in April, we um, decided um, to give refunds to more than a billion dollars worth of customer deposits when people told us they couldn't travel. And this, of course, was really difficult for our host. And even though we were burning a lot of money, we took $250 million of our own balance sheet when it wasn't clear we could raise more money back then and gave it to our host. And, you know, we always are going to make that our gold standard. So we worked with the former Surgeon General of the United States, Dr. Vivek Murthy, who now co-chairs the COVID task force. And we've instituted enhanced cleaning protocols. And we're just trying to work with every city and every government as best as we can to make sure that when people do travel, it's responsible. Shares now indicated to price, Brian, $145 a piece. So I'm just going to keep you posted as we keep going here. Airbnb has performed better than its rivals since this summer, and specifically the hotel industry. How do you think the hotel industry looks different after this? How much will hotels be hurt by the pandemic in a way that Airbnb doesn't seem to be feeling? Well, I think that's kind of up to hotels. What I know is this. The world as we knew it 
in January is over. And that means travel as we knew it in January is over. But that doesn't mean that any company is over. As long as companies are willing to adapt, they're gonna be fine. And what people are telling us is that they want things that are more intimate, a little more private. They obviously don't wanna be in crowded spaces. They wanna make sure the right precautions are handled. And I also think business travel is gonna still go on, but many of us are gonna realize we don't need to go on an airplane to like check in at midnight to have an ADM meeting. And the less actually travel for business and the more flexibility we have, I think more people may actually travel, especially nearby. And so honestly, I think this is a huge opportunity in the coming years for any travel company that wants to adapt, hotels, Airbnb, anyone. But you know, the, 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 the greatest insurance policy is to adapt. On that note, then, there have been some analyst notes out there saying Airbnb is looking like a better bet in the short term, but booking holdings is looking like a better bet if you want to get into this business in the long term. What's your response to that? I mean, I'm going to let all the, everyone that's a prospective investor decide who they want to bet on short term or long term. But now that we're talking about long term, I'll just say this. I'm 39 years old. I started this company with my two friends, Joe and Nate, um, when I was 26. And I remember back then, we were we told people, one day, Airbnb is going to be huge. Thousands of people are going to use this company. And I guess what I would say, the reason I say that is we created this new category of travel. It seemed like a kind of crazy idea. And it just kept growing and growing and growing. And I'm going to be doing this for a, a long time to come. And I'm just really excited to be with my partners and everyone. And you know, I want people to know that you know we're on we're in this for the long term. And long term for me, I measure in terms of decades, not years. Party houses are an ongoing problem for you, and I know that the company has rolled out a lot of new policies, but it's still an issue. How big an issue is it, and what else can you do as this pandemic continues? It's a big issue, you know. Um, you know, we had precautions in place uh, before the pandemic, but of course, when the pandemic broke out, bars were closed, lounges were closed, restaurants were closed. There weren't a lot of concerts, and so people wanted to gather. And people chose Airbnb. We are very adaptable. That was an unfortunate use case, though, that people found. And so we had to crack down, and we've worked really, really hard to do that. We've banned uh, stays with parties for more than people, uh, more than 16 people. We instituted a party ban. We don't allow people under the age of 25 to book last minute for a single night in a city. We increased our risk thresholds to detect high-risk reservations. We've elevated the um, visibility of our neighbor hotline to be able to get more signals. So there's a number of things we're doing. Um, we even took legal action against some guest um, who threw parties as a deterrent, because sometimes just removing somebody from the platform is not enough of a deterrent. So we're just trying to do our very, very best. And as the risks change and safety matters evolve, we'll be there. And we want to always be like one step ahead. You told me experiences could be as big, if not bigger, than your home's business. But when we saw the S1, we didn't see a lot of details around experiences in terms of revenue or bookings. How does the experiences business right now compare to the home's business? Well, I mean, to be clear, um, there aren't a ton of experiences happening right now because many cities and, and countries still have restrictions about people gathering. So actually, when the pandemic broke out, we actually put experiences on pause. You know, in life, timing's everything. I thought this year would be a breakout year for experiences, then their pause. We have now reopened experiences in countries all over the world. And I think that in the next couple of years, we're, it's, I'm very, very excited about them because of this reason. Experiences are like the purest manifestation of Airbnb. I mean, if Airbnb is about hosting, the, the experience is about the host. They provide connection. And in fact, 82% of the time a guest leaves a review in a home, they leave a five-star review. 90% of the time they leave a review and experience, they leave a five-star review. So they even like them more. And so there's a huge opportunity here. Shares now indicated to price at $150 a piece. So now well more than twice um, where you price them. Let's talk a little bit about the longer term. You know, you mentioned you pulled back from a number of different initiatives, whether it was end-to-end -end travel, airlines, boutique hotels, business travel. That list goes on. Now that you've raised this money, will we see you pick those efforts back up? Well, you know, you know, one of the one of the lessons that I learned from this crisis is focus. 
I remember when I was at college, a professor once told me, Brian, you can do everything you want in your life, just not all at the same time. And it can be very tempting when you initially have success to start pursuing many things at the same time. So we are not going to lose our focus. We are incredibly focused right now on hosting and the host providing homes and experience around the world. But I'm 39, and this is not the only thing we're going to do. We're just going to be very thoughtful and extremely disciplined and have a higher ROI standard when we are going back into anything new. And you know, we just really look at certain opportunities that are perishable and certain opportunities that are non-perishable. So obviously, some of the things we put on hold, we just felt like those opportunities will be there down the road. Now, in the S1, you talk about the risks that uh, Google and Amazon play in terms of a gatekeeping role. Of course, we know the Department of Justice has sued Google over antitrust issues. Amazon is being scrutinized. The FTC just sued Facebook along with 48 states. Do you think these companies have too much power? Do you think they're stifling innovation as one of the little guys who had to uh, compete? I like that we're still the little guy. Um, <laughs> um, you know, I, I think over it's the all... years, in the early <laughs> years, you were the oh, little sorry, guys. In the early years, <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, we we've had. I I, I, I you know, I think that um, not for me to to kind of decide, and we we're not as small as we were when we were starting Airbnb. I will say that had it not been for these platforms, Airbnb wouldn't have existed. Um, but you know, I I I'll leave it up to others to decide that. Now, this has been a long time coming, and I'm sure you had visions of how you would celebrate this moment. How does that differ from reality? Well, I mean, I think that, um, you know, I think there's a temptation for an IPO to be a big champagne core popping experience with confetti and everyone cheering. And of course, that's not happening right now, and there's two reasons why. One, we can't. I'm here in my house. But at the same time, though there's a lot of exuberance, I also want to just acknowledge there's still a lot of suffering in the world. And you know, 50% of our hosts depend on the income they make to pay their rent or mortgage. So it's really, really important that we don't lose sight that we started this company because we ourselves couldn't even pay rent. And though there are going to be people, obviously a lot of us are going to do very, very well. I think you always just got to remember this stuff and put it into context. You know, we serve so many stakeholders, including people that are struggling every day, especially today in the midst of a pandemic. As you say, there are a lot of hosts out there that depend on the revenue from Airbnb, from renting out their properties. Going into the pandemic, it wasn't party houses, it was regulation that was your biggest issue. How concerned are you that regulatory headwinds will pick back up as we come out of this around the world? Well, I think that what cities uh, around the world are telling us is they they see Airbnb, I think, as a solution to a lot of their challenges. I mean, you have a situation where a lot of people are leaving cities. You have a situation where many people are having their homes foreclosed. They're struggling to pay the rent or mortgage. In fact, the top uh, professions for hosts in the United States are school teachers and healthcare workers. And most people don't realize this, but 55% of our hosts are women. So this idea that um, Airbnb is dominated by like kind of professional managers, 90% of our hosts are actually individuals. And so I think that what cities are, are, are turning to us for is to say like, you know, we think there's an opportunity for a reset in the relationship. Um, in addition to the fact that I think we've actually had agreements with hundreds of cities and we now collect billions of dollars of hotel occupancy tax. So I actually think that most of the cities we have strong relationships in, and we welcome an even stronger relationship with as many cities as possible, especially as there's major tourism shortfalls that I know are going to be hitting the city budgets. So how are you going to spend the $3.5 billion you just raised? Well, we're not looking to spend all the $3.5 billion we just raised. I mean, when we made some very difficult decisions in cost cutting early this year, I said there's two reasons we're doing this. The first reason is we're in a very bad storm. The second reason is we just don't know how long the storm's going to go on. Anyone who was in the business of predicting the future in January is probably now out of business. So the truth of the matter is maybe travel is going to reopen. Maybe there will be vaccinations, but we don't know. I mean, we don't know. Like, the, we have to be adaptable. And so I like to hope for the best, but plan for the worst. So we are incredibly ambitious. We are going to be looking at lots of new opportunities. 
but we're also going to try to have some sensible caution, especially during this unique once in a generation period where there's a lot of uncertainty. How are you going to be celebrating today, Brian? Um, my family's here and my golden retriever, so we'll be hanging out. Um, and uh, yeah, just, you know, it's, it's, I, 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 my mom and dad were social workers. And so, um, you know, I, uh, I um, never, I, I don't think I ever heard the word IPO growing up or the word entrepreneur. In fact, the only entrepreneur I knew growing up was, I think, Bob from Bob's Pizza. So it's, it's really <laughs> right. incredible to be here. And I, in the depths of the crisis, I remembered something my dad used to tell me growing up. He said, Brian, things are never as good as they seem and they're never as bad as they seem. Of course, I like to tell myself that in the darkest of times, but it's probably good to remind myself it now too, because you know life has a way of balancing each other out.